Hey everybody, this is Kathy Crowder's Mountain in North Carolina, and this is Barn Quilts by Mountain Visions. I always forget to say that. I got something fun for you today, but I'm telling you, it almost blew a fuse in my brain trying to figure it out. But I knew I wanted to do it, and I knew I wanted to show you guys. But I saw this on one of the Facebook groups. I think it was Barn Quilts International. Someone shared it, and it's a pattern from the Kansas City Star from 1932. And if y'all remember, I wasn't born then, but I remember even when I was young, newspapers and uh, hog feed companies, they were always family oriented. And so they would put, I don't know how often, but they would put a quilt pattern in the paper for folks. Well, this one's called a Golden Dahlia, and I'm not going to paint mine yellow or golden colors. I'm going to do pinks. But back to my blowing a fuse in my brain, you know, that don't look hard. Maybe complicated a little bit around the edges, but oh, mercy. I'm telling you, look. I started out, I started out with this, and then I went over there, and I started, I did that, and that didn't work, and then I, I went back, and I made another copy of it, and tried to line it, and once I started line, drawing my main lines, it kind of, I thought it was kind of coming to me, but you can see over here, I messed that all up, but then... I started over here and I figured out my lines here and all of a sudden it started making sense. So, look what I ended up with. Now, if you don't want to fool with listening at me, you can just go take your little screenshot right now. <laughs> but if you want to learn how to make it because you don't know how, then I'm going to show you how. So, let's get started. Now, I tried to clean my ruler up for you so you could see what I was doing. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a cleaner one. I didn't clean that one. I cleaned, the, I cleaned this one. All right. Let me quit talking. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take another color here if I find one and draw the main lines here. Now, all I'm going to do is try to find the center of my board. You, you know, when you got a pattern like that, you got to find the center. So, I'm going up here and I'm finding a 12 and I'm lining my ruler up. And if you see dirt under my fingernails, it's because I was digging in dirt this morning. And I try to scrub it out. Probably scrubbed half my fingernail polish off too. Alright, so here is our center. Now when I did mine a while ago, um, uh, well earlier yesterday or the day before, I used a pencil, but I knew it wouldn't show up here. All right, so let me make sure I 
tell you right, these lines, all of our lines, our main lines are going to be 16 inches. Now this is for a 24 by 24. You'll have to scale it down for an 18 by 18 or scale it up for a 36 by 36. But we're going to do a 24 by 24. So we want to put our ruler. We're going to do that in black so you'll see it. We're going to put it on 8 right in the very center and we're going to line it up with that that line our uh, horizontal line and we're just going to draw it a 16 inch line we've got eight over here and eight over here now we're going to do it again over here we're going to make our vertical line 16 Okay, now, you know, I told you you'd probably get by with a 12 inch, but I, I don't know about that. Because I'm taking a yardstick now, and I'm laying it across from corner to corner. Now I'm going to put that 18 right in the center. And I'm going to get my corners lined up with that mark being right in the center. Now this line needs to be 16 inches too. So I'm on 18. So I'm just counting backward. And that would be from 10 to 18 would be 8. And then from 18 to 26 would be 8. So no matter where you put your ruler, just make sure this line is 18 inches. I mean, 16 inches. All right, we're going to do that again. We're going to line it up with our edges real good. And we're going to go, we'll put it on 18 and we're going to go from 10 to 26. And that gave us 16 inches. So that's our main. Yep, that's our main lines that we're going to work with. All right, now the other lines, I'm going to draw them in orange so you can see them better. Now, here's where your 12 inch ruler is coming in at. If I could find mine, we'll use it. A mess over here. I always do, don't I? I gather up a bunch of stuff over here for y'all to see. Okay. Now, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to the center with the zero right in that center. And we're going to measure two inches. So, I got that on. Round backward. There you go. Now, zero to eight. And we're going to make a tick at two, four, six. And then eight's the last one. Now around here, we got eight inches, and we're going to make a line at two, four, up. two, four, six, and eight. And we're going to do that all the way around this board on every one of our eight inch lines. Two, four, six. Two, four, six. Two, 
four, and six. And you know our eight is that bottom one, so I'm not marking it. I'm getting my zero. The it's right on the zero, not the middle, not the start of the ruler, or the piece of plastic, but the start of the measurements. That used to be the hardest thing for me to get something right, and, and then I figured it out. That ruler does not start at the end of the plastic. It starts at that zero mark. Okay, so now what we're going to do As you see these lines, okay, here's here's our vertical, and here's that first line that we made that was diagonally across our board. You see that first tick mark that we made? All right, we're going to draw down, and we're going to draw down eight inches. From that and how you can tell you got that straight is the lines on your ruler line up with the bottom of your board or your pattern so you know you got it straight so we're going to draw that eight inches we're going to go to the next one line that up and we're going to draw it six and then the next one, we're going to line it up. We're drawing it four. And this very last one is two inches. Ah! Made too long, didn't I? I'll wipe that out in a minute so it won't confuse you. All right, now we're going to, from, we are going from the end of this, see this, that was the two inch mark, right here, we're going there to that two inch mark here. It almost looks like, now we're going to the end of this one, up to the four inch tick mark. And this six inch line goes to the six inch tick mark. And then we have the eight and the eight. Now you see what we've done? Now we're going to go all the way around this whole board doing that. All right, here you go. We are going to, I, you know, I have to get my mind on it. All right, here we go. We're going in this section, we're drawing down eight inches. So you might just have to eyeball that to make sure you're getting it straight. And then we're going six. Just try to keep it straight. Then we're going four. And then two. So we're going from the two, that, you know, that was a boo-boo. Going from the two to the two-inch tick. And we're going from the four-inch tick mark, a four-inch line, 
to the four inch tick mark. And we're going from six to six and from eight to eight. Got that? All right, now I'm going to turn my board. You can still see it, right? All right, so we're going in this next section. We're just going to do every section the same exact way. That is our dahlia. Now you can make it a golden dahlia by making shades of yellow and gold. But we're using pinks. Now, instead of... Oh, wait a minute. Now let me show you another thing that I did. And I'm going to use another color for that. to show you something. All right. Now, each one of these blocks have to be split in two to make it a golden dahlia. So some blocks, when you're lining your ruler up, well, let me get a longer ruler and you probably do a little better. Some blocks, and you have to be careful because some blocks, when you're lining your ruler, see, I can go here, all the way up through here, cutting each one of those in half. But I can't do that on all of them. But I could on that one. And I probably can on some of the other ones. But, like these two. Cut those in half. And cutting every one of them in half. See, there's two more that I, I could have went all the way up to four, but I didn't. Could have made these two together. So some of them you can, some of them you can't. So you just kind of have to look at your ruler when you're putting it down and just see what you can do and what you can't do. Now see, we got every one of them divided in half. Now instead of drawing on that one, I'll go back to this one. You want to take a screenshot of that? And I should have probably let you stop. I mean, I probably should have stopped and maybe you can do it again. Like each, each time I did a section, you could take a screenshot of it and have that picture on your phone or iPad. Now, the way I do it, a lot of times is I print those out so I can have my pattern, my steps, one, two, three, in case somebody else comes along and they want to do it down here in the basement with me or something, and I can show it to them. But you could do that, or you could just go ahead and take the screenshot of that one and take a screenshot of this one because... I colored in, just with the same color of pink, this pattern. And now I'm going to go back along in this one and try to figure out my dark shades and my light shades. And you'll see 
the end result of of the different shades that I've used. And I'll I'll put the I'll either show you the paint colors or I'll put them in the description. Okay, let me show you how to do the border. All right. So what we want to do is mark every two inches. So I'm, just, I'm putting this in this green, hoping it'll show up for you. So every two inches, I'm making a tick mark. Now you can have a plain border. You can get creative and make any kind of border you want to. But I'm showing you how I did this one. All right, so I want a tick mark because this is going to be two inches wide. Now, to save time on the video, I'm not going all the way around. But once I get one done, then you'll know what I'm doing. We've got that line, but we would make tick marks again every two inches. Because here's what we need to do. We need a smaller ruler. So all we're going to do now just draw our blocks so these will have 12 blocks two inches wide and two inches tall so they're two by two okay so in the center the very center, this is 12, remember. We're just going to draw an X. And that's just going to help us keep focused as we draw these, um, the rest of our lines. Now, let's just do for good measure, let's measure one inch here. Because we need that too. I always forget to do that. I think that's one inch. It looks like it, don't it? Okay. I'm right in the center of that, so I'm okay. Can you see that? I think you can. Okay, so we drew our X. Now you see that center line? All we're going to do is draw our triangles to that. Well, that didn't work, did it? You won't have this big thick thing when you're marking yours on your board. That's a solid block. That's a solid block. So your corners are going to be solid in this particular border. Sorry. I was thinking about how thick those lines was. Went too fast. All right, now remember this one's solid. All right, and this, see how this one, these triangles are going this way? Okay, our next set is going this way. 
and that's why I put that in the middle first. It just kind of helps you. Well, did it quit writing all together? We're just going from the middle of our line. We're going in that middle line to the end. So now we have four triangles going from left to right and four going from right to left. Okay, that and all you do is do that same thing all the way around if you wanted this particular border. Alright, now let me show you, let me show you the finished results again, but first, let me get you back up here where you can take a screenshot of that one, and you can take a screenshot of this one, and I don't know if you can see down here at the bottom or not for myself when I hang this pattern up over there. I made some notes just to remind myself, and I don't know if you can read that or not, but I just needed to remind myself what I did. Because it may be a while before I make another one of these. Okay, here she is. Now, remember, we took this picture that was in the Kansas City Star in 1932 and drew our dahlia. I did not use the same border. I, the more I thought about it, the more I thought that took away from the dahlia. I'm not sure if this one does or not, but I like it a lot better than I think that I would that one. Maybe the next time I'll try it and see because as I was painting all these pinks, I got to thinking how pretty different shades of white would be on a different color background, or purples, blues, even oranges. I just think it'd be pretty. All right, you ready for the colors? All right, for the brown that's on the outside, I use natural bark. Now, all of my paints are either Bayer or Valspar. And one day when I get a minute, I may mark them somehow so that I could tell you when I'm showing you the paints. Now, the background is coconut milk. Okay, for the deep pink, my first pink is California wine. Now, if you want to paint one of these, you don't have to go out and buy 10 shades of pink. You could just get one shade and keep lightening it up, but you're going to have to make enough to know you'll have enough to finish the quilt and to do your touch-ups. But like, you don't need much. It really does not take a lot of paint to do this, and most of them I put four coats on, especially that dark brown this in this California wine. All right, then the next color here is cherry brandy. And this color, the next one, was pink punch. And then my very lightest one, because I went from dark out to light, I looked at all the flowers I could, and every one of them, God made them that way, so that's the way I did it. So at the end, at the very end, is powder rose. Now, in the pattern, you'll see in the pattern, I think I told you before, it it's always the dark the dark uh, side of your petal is your main 
colors. So on the right side of the pattern, you'd use the same color, which I did on all the right sides of each petal, every, every one, I used Pleasing Pink. And I started to use white, and I'm glad I didn't. I think it would have thrown it off. But anyway, that is, well, this is California wine, and this is Pleasing Pink. So what I thought was the darkest and the lightest. So that California wine in the middle, and then the Pleasing Pink is what I used for my lightest color, and then that natural bark brown. So, I used five colors of pink, and then the brown, the natural bark, and the coconut milk, and that's what I did, and I hope y'all liked it, and I hope you had a good time watching this, and you can do this it, once you start it and get it drawn out, it's not hard, but you see the border, what I told you to do all the way around. You know, I just did one. See how the arrows are coming in, pointing. So that's it. We'll see y'all in the next video. Hope you subscribe. Bye for now.